Hi, um, sorry I didn't get back on yesterday. I had a migraine and I decided to go to bed really early. Um, but somewhere between yesterday and today, I've been thinking heavily about what I was going to discuss. And this is something that I guess in some ways I'm still kind of processing. But I'm bringing it up because I feel like things happen to people and people feel ashamed and just kind of push it down into a dark place and never discuss it because society teaches us that, no, that's not okay. Nobody wants to hear this and it's shameful and you shouldn't tell anyone that this happened to you and you should hide it and keep it tucked away forever. And you shouldn't because that shit eats away at your fucking soul. It eats away at who you are. So I'm going to share this story. And it's something that a handful of people know. People that are really close to me are really the only ones that know this. Because even when it happened, I told hardly anyone. And it took me about... 10 plus years to even bring it back up and say anything about it. So when I was 13, I was raped by someone that I knew. I considered them to be a friend. I knew for years at that point. They were older, um, no more than 20 years old, but still considered, I think, an adult legally. Um, and it just happened so quickly. You know, I went from leaving my house, walking to the store with him and my friend, to him being on top of me and me saying no and him not stopping. I was a virgin at the time. I had never had sex. I never had any desires to have sex because I wanted to wait till I was married. So as that was happening to me, you know, the pain that you feel, the shame that you feel, the embarrassment, all of these things are feelings that I had and I'm sitting there and I'm crying and I'm yelling and I'm telling them stop and no and get off of me. And it's still daylight outside. It wasn't dark. I'm sure there's still people walking around outside. And he only stopped because I was yelling so loud and he didn't want to get in trouble. But afterwards, I'm sitting there in tears. He kisses me and then he kind of just goes off on his way. And my clothes are dirty. And I'm like rushing home. Um, trying to get home before my mother got back from work and hoping that my stepfather didn't see me when I walked in the house. I run upstairs, I shower, I change, I take my clothes, I throw them away, I hide them underneath all the other trash so nobody would see it. I didn't say anything to anyone. Um, I cried. I went upstairs and I just cried. I didn't come out of my room. So like a week maybe a little bit longer passes and my mom starts asking questions not my mother she's a very intuitive person <laughs> didn't click with me at 13 i'm thinking yeah i can get over on my mom no really couldn't so you know she's asking me and she's always told me you know you can trust me you can talk to me about anything i'm not gonna get mad so i trusted that so I write her a letter about what happened and how it happened. And she flipped the fuck out on me. She took a razor blade. She sliced up my bed, um, my pillows, whatever the fuck I had on there was all cut the fuck up. And I just remember looking at my stuff like, wow, like I can't believe this shit. 
And, you know, I'm like, I felt betrayed by my mother because I trusted her and her reaction was not what she said it was going to be. So at that point, my trust was broken. And I continued to go to school. Um, one day she picks me up and I'm being sent off to live with my father. And there was never a conversation about this. I was completely unaware that any of this was happening. You know, I didn't get a chance to say goodbye to my friends I, and nothing. I just was sent the fuck off. So at 13, you're thinking, damn, this was my fault. I did this. You know, you feel like you're not wanted. You feel like you're not loved. You feel like you caused all of this shit to happen. And in reality, it's not your fault. You know, but again, people process shit how they process shit. People deal with shit how they deal with shit. And if they don't know how to properly deal with the situation, how are they going to help you deal with your situation? Nobody called the cops. Nobody said anything. It was something that kind of got swept under the rug because my reputation of being a virgin mattered more than getting justice for me. And I say this because I'm sure there's so many more people in the world that have gone through this, that have suffered this, that are still suffering this in silence and never say anything about it. Like I said, it took me 10 years before I even confronted my mother on the way she handled the situation because it was, I blamed myself. I blamed myself for so fucking long that it fucked me up psychologically. Like I felt worthless. I felt like I wasn't more than my looks, my body. I felt like I couldn't be fucking loved. I didn't have any self-worth. I didn't have any self-esteem, any self-respect. I had none of that. So people would just take advantage of me. People would do what the fuck they wanted. I didn't have a voice because when I said no, my no meant nothing. It didn't matter how much I said no. It didn't matter how much I cried. It didn't stop it. So I always felt like my voice didn't matter. How I felt was irrelevant. And I want people to know that's not the case. Your voice matters. And when you say no, it means no. And just because that sick motherfucker didn't understand that's what the fuck it meant is not your fault. It's nothing to be ashamed of. It's nothing to fucking be embarrassed about. It's nothing that needs to be fucking hidden because you didn't do shit wrong. You take it. You accept it. You own it. And you fucking move on from that shit. You need to talk to somebody. Go see someone. But you need to let it out because that shit will eat away at you. Until you lose yourself and you don't even know who the fuck you are anymore. And when you look in the mirror, you don't see a beautiful person standing there. You see something that's like garbage. You're just looking at yourself in fucking disgust. Like, how can I let someone touch me? How can I let these people do this to me? So understand, it's not your fault. It's nothing to be ashamed of or fucking embarrassed about. Speak your truth. Let them be ashamed. Let them deal with that shit. It's not your responsibility to hold that fucking shame. You forgive yourself and you forgive them so that you can move forward for you. Fuck them. Fuck every fucking body. It don't matter. Fuck everybody. Everyone's always going to be judgmental. Everyone's always going to have something to fucking say. You don't live your life for them. You live your life for you. More so because nobody knows what the fuck you suffered. Nobody knows what the fuck you're going through. Nobody knows the anxiety you fucking deal with every fucking day. 
the struggle that you have to go through to just find value in yourself, to find love for yourself, to find your fucking voice to actually speak up and defend yourself because nobody else did when you needed them to. So please, don't ever feel like you're worthless because you're not. Don't ever feel like you don't matter because you do. Just understand that this is difficult. You know, this isn't something easy. Like, this shit still affects me to this day. I have problems that I didn't even realize I still had, you know? My whole life, I've always been kind of introverted, always a shy person. But when that happened, it became more of a, I don't want people to look at me. I keep myself covered. I cover my body all the time. I don't, maybe I'll show a little bit of my stomach, but I don't, I don't like it. Even bathing suits, like I wear one piece bathing suits. I just have a thing with people looking at me and makes me uncomfortable. And I've been that way for so long that that's, that's my normal at this point. That's what the fuck is normal for me. You know, and it's fucked up because it shouldn't be that way. I should be comfortable with who I am. I should be comfortable with my body. And I am, as long as I'm at home or around family. <laughs> but when it comes to me being out in public and all of this, no, I, I want clothing on my body. I want a majority of my body covered. <laughs> And this is why I say just when you're able to accept the shit that has happened to you in your life and take it as a learning experience, do that. Use it as a fucking motivation. Don't let it tear you down. Don't let it eat away at you. Use it. (laughs) Because everything that I've gone through, I had to learn how to heal by myself. I didn't have help. Nobody told me to go see a therapist. Nobody said, hey, this is how you handle this shit. No, because everything is always so fucking taboo. Everything is always like, nah, we're never going to talk about this. This is not to be discussed. This is to be buried in the fucking yard, six feet under type shit. And it's truly not. Like, you can't do that. You can't do that. I know it's difficult and I know it's a hard conversation to fucking have. But you have to have it, especially if you're a parent. You need to have it with your child. You need to understand your child. You need to listen and believe them when they tell you shit like this. And you need to get justice for them. You need to get them the help that they need so that when they're grown, they're not suffering shit from fucking 20 years ago. You have to be there for your children. They have you. They're still kids. They don't know how to speak up for themselves. So please know, like I said, whoever it was that needed this message, I love you. And please talk to someone about what is going on. Don't be ashamed or embarrassed about it because you didn't do anything wrong. I love you. Thank you for tuning into this. And I apologize for the heaviness, but this was something that someone needed to hear. And like I said, I'm available if someone needs to talk about anything. I hope this helps you in some way and gives you some type of strength. Thank you again.